G'day everyone, artist Wayne Dowson here, and it's day two of our awesome Victorian high country adventure. It's early morning, and we've just left the town of Dargo, and we find ourselves here at the foot of the Billy Goat Bluff track. Gentlemen, start your engines, and remember these two blokes here, because they told us you guys might as well go first. They were waiting for a big group of enduro riders who were coming from Dargo. So the four of us set off to climb the giant seven kilometre hill on the Billy Goat Bluff track. Our plan was to send Adrian, the pinup boy for Amarok Australia, out ahead. Because after his hill climbing effort yesterday, we thought there was a pretty good chance we'd have to give him a helping hand. The track length is 125 kilometres long, but forget that, I'm just showing you the hill. And it's safe to say it's one of the steepest tracks because it ascends 1,200 metres in seven kilometres. The rocky incline is slippery when wet, so thank God it wasn't wet because our mate Adrian, the pit-up boy for Amber Rock Australia, would never have got up it. Come to think of it, he didn't get up it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First things first, we needed to complete the first part of the hill which would take us up to the helipad. That's where a helicopter can land to rescue people that go tumbling over the edge, have heart attacks when they see how steep it is, or just generally shit themselves. The first initial climb, which incidentally keeps going and going and going until it gives you a really good arm pump, takes you to the helipad, which is probably around three kilometers away. From there, you still have another four and a half kilometers of gigantic hill. And if you're thinking this looks steep, well, it's got nothing on the second half of the hill. You do get a short reprieve, and then start climbing once again. So far so good, no one had come off, there were no mishaps, and we were making great progress. the last push, the last uphill climb before reaching the helipad. When we finally arrived at the helipad, Adrian was cheering and fist pumping the air. That is until Mad Mouth told him that's the easy part. Now we have the big hard hill climb. Beautiful views on top of the helipad. Time to knuckle down and ride the hardest part of the Billy Goat Bluff hill climb. One big steep descent and then it was all uphill. This is also where Big Jace the bodyguard, instead of sticking to our plan and all of us following Adrian, just in case we needed to help him, well, Big Jace decided he'd just ride off ahead. And of course you know what was about to happen, don't you boys and girls? This was where the ride started to turn to shit.
ready? Yep. We're only at the beginning of a huge hill climb. Um, you're gonna have to roll it down, start down there. So after Adrian dropped his bike, again, I took mine further down the hill so I could get a run up. There was no way I could stop where Adrian was. It was just too steep. And look who I found further up. It's Mad Mal. <laughs> now take a long look at where Adrian is and how much of the trail he's blocking off. And remember those two enduro riders at the beginning of the video? Well, they had finally arrived with another 20 riders in tow. It was absolute mayhem. There were riders coming up behind Adrian and falling off themselves. Oh, how they must have been cursing him. For ages we watched all these poor riders trying to get around Adrian who couldn't do a thing but stand there helplessly in the middle of the track as he got roosted with rocks and dust. <laughs> and when the riders disappeared up the hill and the dust settled, poor Adrian still had to get his big 790 KDM up this bloody hill. And if you're wondering where Mel is, I was wondering the exact same thing. We're almost there. And let's not talk about Big Jace the bodyguard. Who knows where the f he was? Look, Mad Mal had walked down just to tell us there were four-wheel drives on their way up. Finally, we got Adrian up to our bikes where he could get a good run-up. Plus, we wanted to stay in front of the 4x4s. Adrian was now out in front, followed by Mad Mel and yours truly. So far so good, no Adrian the pinup boy standing by his fallen 790, maybe he was going to get all the way to the top.
was Mad Mal's turn to get stuck. I can't believe Adrian got through here and Mad Mal did it. You're hopeless, Mad Mal, you bin chicken. I couldn't help think how well Adrian had actually done getting all the way through that. He was starting to redeem himself. Now talking about the pin-up boy, here he is, just ahead of me. Shortly after that we were joined by Mad Mal. It was now time to ride to the top. Here we go, a great place to stop and just wait for the boys. Make sure everybody gets up safely. But after Mad Mel rode past, there was no sign of the pinup boy. was too stuffed to go back down and see why the pinup boy was taking so long I was heading to the top for a rest and I still had no idea how far the top was however I did know that Big Jace the bodyguard and Mad Mal had radio contact with the pinup boy so hopefully they'd know what was going on Adrian was stuck once again, but this time it was Big Jace's turn to go and help. He rode so far down the hill, then got off and walked, but he still couldn't find Adrian. Oh well, it was up to me. Big Jace suggested taking the luggage off my bike, which was a great idea, and then I headed back down the hill, a long way down the hill in search of Adrian, the pin-up boy for Amarok Australia, who had all the four-wheel drivers on this great big hill helping him. Um, here we'll go back to the now. We moved the bikes out of the way to allow the four-wheel drivers to continue their journey. It was no good Adrian, the youngest in our group, holding everybody up. Come for a ride, he said. It'll be funny, he said. <laughs> Do you want me to ride your bike for you? Nah. 
Then I rode Adrian's bike up as far as I could get it. I'd walk down to my bike, ride that up even further, then walk back down to his bike. He'd then have a go, but he wouldn't get bloody far. You right? Turn that camera off. <laughs> I can't turn the camera off, pin up boy. My job is to catch all the action! Oh, bit by bit we were able to get his stupid KDM further up the hill. And all the while adding more and more scratches to it. But in the end, this was no job for boys. It was time to call in the big guns. We put out the call to Big Chase the Bodyguard. And all Adrian, the pinup boy for Amarok Australia could do was do the walk of shame. Have a bushwalk. <laughs> but would Jace the Bodyguard succeed where we failed? Of course he bloody would. We don't call him the bodyguard for nothing. <laughs> <laughs>